The Pepsodent Show, presenting A Date with Judy. Hello? Hello, hello, Judy. Uh, what are you doing Tuesday night? Fire. Nothing. Oh, swell. Uh, can I have a date with you? Oh, of course. Sure, you certainly can. Uh... Who is this? Uh huh. You've got a date with Judy, chaperoned by Pepsodent. You'll meet Judy in just a moment, but right now let me tell you about another date you have. A date down at your corner store to get some Pepsodent tooth powder. And that's an important date. For it'll mark the beginning of a brighter smile than you've ever had before. And lots of brighter dates, too. For you see, Pepsodent with Irium contains the patented polishing agent, composite metaphosphate, that not only makes your teeth feel so clean, but also makes your teeth look so bright. And Pepsodent's the only tooth powder in the world that contains this marvelous ingredient. So remember your date at the corner store. Get a package of Pepsodent tooth powder tonight. And now, flick back your hair and straighten your tie. You have a date with Judy. The town Judy Foster lives in is not small and not large. But if Judy were to take the census, she'd count only the men. With Judy, there are always too few, or too many as the case may be. Right now, there's one too many in the Foster living room, a creature named Herbert. And about Herbert, Judy has this to say. Mother dear, this is about the droopiest itch I've ever been the cause of sitting on our sofa. And I've been the cause of some too positively droopy itch sitting on our sofa. Mother darling, would you please have a special favor? Go downstairs and be simply precious to him. Me? Be precious to him, Judy? Yes, on account of it's very discouraging to boys to have a girl's family popping around and being sweet. Now, if you go down and be awfully nice to him, it'll discourage him and he'll go home. I'm not very flattered about the way you want to use my charms, Judy. But if I go out with him, somebody will see me with him. Oh, please help me, Mother. But are you sure it would work? I might go downstairs and be sweet to him, and he'd simply love it. And he'd come every evening after that just to see me. Mother, you're 38 years old. Well, I'm still rather glamorous, though. Father says so time and time again. Oh, Father. Really, Mother, I think it's very undignified to speak of luring Herbert in that undignified manner. At your age. I'm rather well-preserved. At least, uh, rigor mortis hasn't set in yet. Hey, Judy, you better come downstairs and collect this item of yours named Herbert. He's been plopped there since... Randolph, my... will you please remember that you're only ten and stop acting like you're eleven? Well, you better get him out of there. Father can't stand it anymore. He's turning green. Who? Herbert? No, Father. I should have thought it would have been Herbert, knowing you and your father as I do. This is the first time I didn't care how Father and Randolph reacted on one of my men. But if you're suffering so, Randolph, you know you don't have to stay in the parlor if you don't want to. There are other rooms in the house. I can't drag myself away. I'm held spellbound. I'm like one bewitched. Oh, the horror of it all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what have you been reading now? Your collection of guys fascinates me, Judy. You always think there can't be a ghoulier one than there is. Mother, will you please make Randolph stop analyzing everything? Stop analyzing everything, Randolph. Go downstairs, dear. The heroic women of your family will follow. Okie dokie. This may curl the braces on my teeth, but I'll go downstairs and take one more whack at it. <laughs> Judy, let me get this all straight. Where did you meet this boy? Oh, I never met him. I never saw him before in my life. Well, I'm sort of ignorant about these things, dear. If you never saw him, how do you happen to have a date with him tonight? Well, that's on account of Gertie's fishing wing. You see, she wrote me this man was coming to town. This and so... man? Herbert. Oh, he's a man. Well, of course he is, Mother. He's 18. Oh. So he phoned me, and on account of Gertie recommending him, I gave him a date tonight. Well, things are beginning to get a little clearer now. All except one thing. You haven't ever seen him. How do you know he looks so awful? Oh, I saw him. Well, now everything's all mixed up again. When did you see him? Just now. I sneaked downstairs and peeked. And Mother, he's icky, but too positively. Mother. Yes, dear, I'm right here. Suddenly, I see the whole grisly plot. It's Gertie Sissonwing. Because I took a day away from her up at the lake last summer. And now she's getting even with me. Sticking this Herbert on me. Well, I bet she's been looking around for months to find something awful enough to stick on me. And finally, she found Herbert. 
And now we have to get rid of him. Well, we, um, we could stay up here and let Father and Randolph take their natural course. No, Mother, that would be cheating. All right. We'll go downstairs together. And working cheek by jowl, maybe we can pry the ick off the sofa. Don't forget to give him the work. I will. But what sort of work, I won't say till I see him. I may go for it. Mother! Judy, is that you, finally? Yes, it's me, Father. I mean, I. Uh, how do you do? I suppose you're Herbert Tompkins, I presume. Well, Father isn't Herbert Tompkins, and I'm not, so I guess you hit him right on the nose. Randolph, please. How do you do, Herbert? I'm Judy. How do you do? <laughs> this is Mr. Foster, my father. Yes, I've been talking to Herbert. And this is my brother, Randolph. Yes, I've been listening to Herbert. <laughs> and this is Mrs. Foster, my mother. Oh, I'm so happy to know you, Herbert. Judy told me so much about you. I Shall just... we all sit down? Uh, thank you. Nice evening, isn't it? Oh, lovely. <laughs> Beautiful for this time of year. Yes, it is. <laughs> where, uh, where did you say you were from, Herbert? Cleveland. Oh, Cleveland. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Cleveland's a beautiful city. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, who do I know from Cleveland? Do you know the Dunlap? No, I don't. Oh. Well, I know some people there by the name of Spencer. Do you know them? Spencer? No, I don't. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> They're in the brewing business. I don't know them. Uh, do, do you know the uh, Eldridge's? Well, the name is awfully familiar. Yeah, Mr. Eldridge is in the canning line. He's a great salesman. You know, I, I don't know him. Uh, Herbert, uh, do you know the McSlap cabbages? The McSlap cabbages? Well, I know of them. Well, Mr. McSlap cabbage sells snowshoes. Oh, yes, I've heard of him. Well, isn't that lovely? Imagine you knowing the same people. Oh, this is a small world when you think Randolph, of... Randolph, have you ever been to Cleveland? Has father, and he knows the Eldridges. Mother, will you please make Randolph stop making up people? Never... Randolph, your sister says to stop making up people. Have her tell that to me directly sometime. Herbert, there's something important, vital, that I want... I'll never forget old Ed Eldridge. You know, one time father, he... Father, is... please. What? Huh? Herbert, oh. I feel simply dreadful about this. Because, you see, I'd absolutely forgotten about another engagement I had. But, gee, I had some tickets for the show. I'll go. Now, Randolph, nobody asked you. Oh, how lovely and thoughtful of you, Herbert, to have bought tickets for a show. So I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid it would be the most tactful thing for you to leave before this other person comes. On account of it might be very embarrassing for you to meet on account of the most tactful thing when you... I'll uh, walk to the gate with you, Herbert. Thanks, Mrs. Foster. I'll make it up to you real soon. Honestly, I will. Oh, I think I hear a car driving up in front of the house. You better go through the side door, Herbert. Quick, this way. Oh, well, good, good night, night Judy. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Good night. Mrs. Good night. Good night. Well, thank everything. He's gone. You, um, you didn't give me much chance to use my charm on him. Oh, is that what it was, charm? <laughs> Judy, did you really have another engagement for tonight? Of course not. <laughs> but wasn't I tactful, Mother? No, but it got rid of him. And I'm sure Father was helping, too. Uh, what did you talk to him about before we came downstairs, dear? Mm, hubcaps. Hubcaps? Automobile hubcaps. It was very dull. Oh, dear, a whole evening I'm stuck without a date. I don't know what to do. You had a date? Oh, him. I certainly must be very unpopular to not have anybody phone me. If nobody does, what'll I do? I don't understand, girls. Who wants to? Oh, Mother, you answer. Because I don't want men to think I'm sitting by the telephone waiting for them to call. Well, you wouldn't want to give him a false impression like that. I should say not. Keep still, Randall. Hello? Yes. Yes, he is. Judy, it's for you. Is it a boy? Judy, I don't want you to take this too hard. I, I hate to break it to you, but it's a girl. Oh, no, dear. Hello? Hello, Judy. Uh, this is Gloria. Haven't you got a date either? No. Look, it's only 8 o'clock and a date can call any time up to 8.30. I always give up at 8.30, so maybe we ought to hold the line. Well, you're positively right, Judy. But do you mind if I just say something quick? Somebody might be trying to get me on the phone right this minute. Well, just listen to this, Judy. There's a new man in town. I heard Ruth talking about him this afternoon. There he is. Yes. And from what I understand, he must be quite the something. They call him Tiger. Oh, a wolf? I imagine that's the idea. Anybody called Tiger, it'd be sort of 
Well, you know. <laughs> you sure would. Uh, you think we could get to him anyway? Oh, the only person who knows him that I know is Ruth. Well, I'll give her a buzz and see if I can find out anything. Call me back if you hear anything. Uh, Okie dokie, I will. Three, six, five, four. It, uh, it isn't eight thirty yet, dear. I know, but I'm sacrificing tonight for the future. Oh, how brave of you, dear. Hello? Hello, Ruth. This is Judy. Oh, haven't you got a date either? No. Well, would you mind calling me back about 8.30? Well, I just want to say this quick. I hear there's a new boy in town, a tiger somebody or other. I hear he's cute, and I understand you know somebody who knows him. Hello, Edith. This is Ruth. Listen, I hear this new man in town, this tiger, is terribly cute. I understand you know somebody who knows him, but I'm not thinking. Gloria, this is Edith. I hear this new man in town, Tiger, is too positive and glamour. Hello? Judy, this is Gloria. Listen, everybody is just simply raving about this tiger. Edith just calls me, and she says he's absolutely terrific. Yes, but where does he live or anything? Well, this is the funny part of it. You know your father's partner in his factory? Yes. Well, this tiger is the nephew of your father's partner. I hear he's been... Oh, uh, I've got to go now, Gloria. Goodbye. Father? Well, uh, were you addressing me? Father, you know your partner at your factory? Yes, by some strange coincidence, I do. I met him first about 20 years ago when I was a traveling salesman, and he was... Father, this is important. I bet. Father, do you know your partner has a nephew? Well, I might have supposed your interest in my factory would turn out to be something like this. No, Judy, I did not know my partner had a nephew. Honestly, Father, you're never any help. I know, I'm a droopy ick. (laughs) (laughs) If you don't know your partner's nephew, then you can't very well invite him here for dinner, can you? No, I can't. Well, you won't let this make any difference in our relationship, though, will you, Julie? You, you'll still go on living in this house? Father, I do wish you'd reserve your hilarity for the proper occasion. Oh, this is not the proper occasion? Look, Father, couldn't you go to this partner of yours and say, Look, Pard, Randolph, I will thank you not to interrupt me when I'm speaking to Father. You could say you hear he has this nephew who's terrifically super... And you'd adore to have him come to dinner at your house. I can see Father adoring. Well, the truth is I'd hate to lie to my partner like that. He never lies to me. What I could say is I hear he has this nephew who is terrifically super, and my daughter would adore to have him come to dinner at our house. As for me personally, I could say I couldn't think of anything I would adore less than having a terrifically super nephew to dinner. Me too. Mother, please make Father be serious. I am serious. There have been enough terrifically super nephews around this place without having any more of them. And a dinner, too. A man's house is his castle. He has a right to sit down to a meal unhampered by... Mother, say something to Father. Hello, Father. (laughs) I don't see why anybody in this house can't discuss matters seriously with a girl when a girl is seriously discussing matters. I don't see why... Maybe you could invite this young man to dinner. I'd kind of like to see this terrifically super young man, Tiger. I'm rather intrigued myself. Yeah, if I thought you were serious, Dora, I'd say you were just as man-crazy as Judy. Oh, I am serious. To tell the truth, I would adore to have this terrifically super nephew to dinner. I want to see what a boy called Tiger looks like. Very tigerish, I hope. With his dripping paws all over everybody. <laughs> you will do it, won't you, Father? All right, but I never heard of anything so disgusting in all my life. Seems to me Judy could be called Tiger. When I was a young man, girls didn't come after me with uh, with, their dripping paws. Oh, didn't they just? Oh, Father, you're a sugar puss. I think it's wonderful you to invite him. Just wonderful. I think I'll run upstairs and try a new polish on my nails. Is that the way girls always express themselves, by trying a new polish on their nails? Don't be drooly, Father. I just want to see if the series will go with my chartreuse. I'm going to wear my chartreuse gown Thursday night. What's Thursday night? That's the night you're going to invite Tiger to dinner for. So soon? Dora, do you understand, young girls? (laughs) Yes, dear. Well, I don't. That's why I was able to hook you. I was never hooked. I married you of my own free will. (laughs) Yes, dear. Dora, what are you thinking about? About Tiger. Do you remember what you used to be called when you were a young man? Oh, what? Bear Cat. (laughs) Bear Cat Foster. So I was. Oh, you were terrifically super. (laughs) 
Terrifically Super. We're going to hear more about that in just a minute, but Terrifically Super is a pretty good way to describe the new Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush, for it is super. Well, I tell you, next time you're near the toothbrush counter, take a look at the toothbrushes you see displayed. From a distance, they all look pretty much the same. As a matter of fact, most of them are. All but one. That's the sensational new Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush. And it's different from all the rest. It's different because it's the only toothbrush in the world that has 50 tufts in a small compact head. Twice as many tufts as any other. It's different because these 50 tufts provide you with double power cleansing. Twice the brushing contact with your teeth. And finally, because there are 50 tufts in the Pepsodent toothbrush, the individual Fibrex bristles that compose the tufts are slender and springy, gentler and easier on tender gums. That means you don't have to use a brush with harsh, stiff bristles that may scratch and bruise. Just do this. Before you go to bed tonight, drop down to your nearest store and get a Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush. It's the gentle, modern way to make teeth gleam and sparkle. Well, now let's see. It's the next afternoon, and Judy and friend Gloria are in a booth at Scully's Drugstore, poring over fountain menus. Gee, I don't know what to order. I'd like one of these 30-cent Super Dupers, but I suppose I often always get sick when I eat a Super Duper. And besides, they cost 30 cents. I can't come over to your house Thursday night, Gloria. I didn't know you were supposed to come over to my house Thursday night. Should I order one of these Super Dupers, or should I order a Coke? I thought in case you were expecting me over to your house Thursday night, I can't come. I wasn't expecting you. Listen to this, Judy. Lover's Delight. Two scoops of maple walnut ice cream, marshmallow sauce, whipped cream, and maraschino cherries. I wouldn't be able to come over Thursday night because I'm going to be busy. Of course, I think the Hawaiian dream is even better. One banana half, two scoops of pineapple ice, hot fudge sauce, and ground pecan. I have a date Thursday night. That's good. Shall I take the Hawaiian dream? So the lover's delight has maraschino cherries. If the Hawaiian dream had maraschino cherries instead of old ground pecans, I'd... I have a date with Tiger Thursday night. Here's one called African Idol. Two scoops of chocolate. Judy! Did you say you have a date with Tiger? Yes. Yes, I do. Let me see the menu. Oh, but Judy, how simply terrific. Tiger, how on earth did you swing it? Well, he thought of... Oh, this moonlight special sounds interesting. One peach half, two scoops of rainbow ice cream, maple syrup, top oh, off with Judy, macaroon... Oh, but what happened? How did he happen to call you? Did you meet him any place or what? Oh, possibly he saw me someplace and thought he'd give me a ring... I think I'll have a lover's delight if you can lend me three cents. I only have 27. Sure, but listen, how about Tiger? You mean he just saw you someplace and found out who you were and called you? Mm, I guess so. Oh, but that's the most romantic thing I ever... Oh, Judy, it's just luxurious. Oh, it's all right. It just happened, that's all. Yes, I think I'll have a lover's delight. Oh, I wish something like that had happened to me sometime. There must be something irresistible to men about you, Judy. Oh, it's... Nothing much, I Hello, just... witches. Oh. Hello, Randolph. What are you two blab, blab, blabbing about today? I and Curly were standing outside, and we saw you two through the window, blab, blab, blabbing. And I said to Curly, I bet they're blab, blab, blabbing about... Randolph. Oh, I have good news for you, Judy. Father just got word Tiger accepted his kind invitation to dinner on the evening of Thursday, June... Oh! Oh! Well, I guess that's all I know of interest to you. So long, Munches. Hello, Faith. Hello, Randolph. Well, girls, I'll take the order now. What's it going to be? Well, well, what's the matter? Did reading them super dupers hypnotize you? I'll have a small Coke. I'm saying here. <laughs> was the most vicious and malicious thing anybody ever did. All I did was tell the truth. Well, you didn't have to tell it in front of my best girlfriend. Do I got to be careful who I tell the truth in front of? A girl can't even have a private life without her own brother telling every single thing she does. I didn't say you did anything. I said father invited him. What are you so sore about? What are you so piggly-wiggly about? Randolph, I wish you were draft age. (laughs) I bet I know. I bet you were filling Gloria full of poop about how Tiger's running after you instead of you running after him. And now you're all piggly-wiggly because Randolph, I... Randolph, just... will you please stop concerning yourself with my affairs? My goodness, all you do is investigate me like the FBI. 
Why can't you ever leave me alone? You're a very interesting psychological study. That's a fine thing to say to your own sister. Suppose I told Mother you said I was a very interesting psychological study. She'd see the point. Really, Randolph, I've had entirely sufficient of this conversation with you. You can consider it ended. All right, so it's ended. It's completely at a close. If you're waiting for me to bust out into heart-rending sobs, you can stop waiting. Just remember this, Randolph. If anyone asks you how it happens that Tiger's coming to dinner Thursday night, just say he phoned me. That's just what I'll say. For a girl as truthful as you, I'd do anything. Yep, that's just what I'll say. <laughs> You know, Curly, my sister's being pursued by some guy, Tiger. Ever hear of him? Sure. My sister, Ruth, she's been talking about him for a week. She's been trying to whip up a date with him. He phoned my sister, Judy. My sister, Ruth, she can't get a rise out of him. He's got a date with my sister, Judy, on Thursday. My sister, Ruth, she's been trying to angle one. She doesn't know him, though. Nobody knows him. He's a mystery man to everybody but my sister, Judy. They're running a big fever for each other. Love, huh? <laughs> like nothing you ever saw outside of a movie. He pursues my sister Judy all over the place. My sister Ruth, she can't get a rise out of him. Oh, I guess my sister Judy's going to marry him. Yeah? Well, then, then he'll be your brother-in-law. Yeah. Imagine having a brother-in-law named Tiger. Oh, gosh. I got to tell that to Ruthie. She'll, be, she'll certainly get a kick out of this. You got to tell her right now. Listen to what I'm saying. You'll be interested in this, you will. You know I'm never interested in anything you say. Go away, Curly. Can't you see I'm giving myself a pedicure? Yeah, I can see. Wow! Have you got big feet? <laughs> will you please go away, Curly? Oh, keep dokey. If you aren't interested in anything about this wonderful tiger you're always talking about... Tiger? What about him? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in anything, I say. Oh. Besides, you got a pedicure on hand. No, on foot, I guess. Which do you like best? On hand what or on... about Tiger Curly? Hmm? Oh, Tiger. Hmm, nothing. Except that he's got a big romance on hand. Or do you like on foot? What do you mean, romance? Him and Randolph's sister, Judy. They're running a big fever. <laughs> This is Ruth. Guess what? You know who Judy Foster's running around with? Tiger. Yeah, and she never said a word to us. Gloria, this is Edith. Gloria, you'll never guess who's going steady with who. Judy and Tiger. Everybody says he's simply that way about her. She must have gone in on him before any of us had a way. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Judy. This is Gloria. Oh, hello, Gloria. Judy, Randolph was wrong about what he said in Scully's yesterday, wasn't he? He was? Oh, he must have been, because everybody in town is talking about you and Tiger and the way he's pursuing you. They are? Yes, and I think it's just luxurious. Judy, are you... are you engaged? Engaged? You mean to be married or something? Oh, isn't it true? Well, uh... There isn't much in it. I, uh, well, I'm not exactly engaged. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. Forks on the left, teaspoons on the right. Mother, how do I look? Like a glamour puss. Well, here I am. Do I look like a glamour puss? Randolph, I'm kind of worried about this polish, though. You think it goes all right with the chartreuse? Do I have to wear a black tie and dinner coat? Mother, please don't let Father spoil everything. You know, if he gets into one of his usual moods... Oh, don't worry about him. I'm positive he'll be absolutely charming. When the time for it arrives... What time do you say he was coming, Father? For the fifth time, 6.30. I can hardly wait. Mother, please don't let Randolph spoil everything. You know, if he acts like he usually does, why... Well, none of us are going to act like we usually do. We're all going to be polite to each other. And lovely to look at and gracious, even witty. None of us ever did that before. 
Mother, please try and get your son not to make any of his habitual remarks this evening. Randolph, for your sister's sake, please don't make any of your habitual remarks this evening. What do you want me to do? Sublimate my personality? <laughs> there he goes again, analyzing everything. Mother, listen. Hmm? What do you think of this to say to Tiger when he comes? At last. The mysterious tiger. Are you really as mysterious as they say you are? Well, I, uh, I think it's fair. Are you sure I look all right? Yes, dear. I'm not sure. Mother, I don't know why you never discipline Randolph. He doesn't care what he says. He says practically anything. And if he says the wrong things in front of Tiger, I'll, I'll scream. Gee whiz, all this fuss about a goon named Tiger. My goodness, if we weren't having strawberry shortcake for dessert, I'd get sick right now. All this fuss about a... You see, Mother, that's what I mean. He'll just keep that up. Well, I'm ready. I haven't worn this dinner jacket since the Elks Convention. I feel like a stuffed pig. (laughs) Please, Father, be civilized tonight, won't you? Just this once. Dorothy, I have to let your daughter talk to me like that. Civilized just this once indeed. Oh, I wish everybody'd stop appealing to me to make everybody else stop doing everything. Can't anybody in this house ever stop anybody else by themselves? Oh, Mother, please don't get excited now. It's bad enough Father's all excited and Randolph will probably act like a boor... Oh, if only everybody calm down. Calm down, everybody. He's here. Tiger's here. And nobody gets excited. Everybody be absolutely themselves. I'm myself. I'll go to the door. Do I look all right? Do my nails look terrible with this chartreuse? Well, guess I'll open the door. At last, the mysterious tiger. Are you really as mysterious as they say? Hello, Judy. <laughs> Perfect. What are you doing here? Well, this isn't the wrong night, is it? Because tonight was when I thought my uncle said for me to Your come. Your uncle? You aren't... You aren't Tiger, are you? That's what they call me. Why? No reason. I just... Hey, what's the matter with Judy? Her face is chartreuse. <laughs> Well, when that Judy has a date, anything can happen. In fact, it very often Mr. does. Mr. Goodwin, I wonder if... Well, now, just a minute, Judy. Uh, before I talk to you, I want to introduce our audience to a young fellow who's having a little chat with his alter ego. You know, his other self? Listen. And the trouble with you, the boss says to me, the trouble with you is you're a sourpuss. You'll never be a star salesman till you learn to smile. Well, smile then, you chump. With teeth like mine? Dingy, dull teeth? What do you think I am? Well, that's an argument that can go on forever, but here's the solution. If you want a brighter smile, a more brilliant smile, then use the tooth powder that independent laboratory tests prove gives greater brilliance. And that tooth powder is Pepsodent tooth powder. For you see, Pepsodent's the only tooth powder in the world containing composite metaphosphate. That's why it has the power to produce a luster actually twice as bright as the average of all other leading brands. So, if you want a brighter smile, a cheerier smile, just say, as thousands say, Pepsodent Tooth Powder, please. Well, good night, Judy. Good night. I had a perfectly wonderful time. Oh, really, the pleasure was mine. I, I'm not doing anything next Tuesday night. In that case, it's a date. I think that would be simply super. Remember, you have a simply super date with Judy next Tuesday at the same time. A date with Judy, with Ann Gillis, Paul McGrath, and Margaret Brayton, is written by Aline Leslie and Jerry Schwartz. And the orchestra is directed by Wilbur Hatch. Now, mark this on your calendar, won't you? You have a date with Judy again next Tuesday. Bill Goodwin speaking for President. This is the National Broadcasting Company.